we can apply it to the various uh, workplaces that we will find ourselves in. Allow me to just share my screen. Um, also noticed that um, we haven't had the careers um, challenge on the drive, but I'll just copy it there soon. Just a minute, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get started. Um, so today we'll be looking at problem solving in a workplace. And it's not just the workplaces that we experience problem solving. I think we experience it everywhere, even when we're doing our challenges, especially the technical ones, we get to, we get so many problems that need to be solved. And the whole point or the whole goal of this um, exercise is to make sure that you are training your mind to always solve those problems that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis and having to act uh, on time. Yeah, so there is this favorite quote of mine from Peter that says, problems are just merely solutions waiting to be found. Um, what do you think of that? Can anyone just unmute and tell me if they do agree with this or not, or what they think about the squad? Does problems always provide an opportunity for you to act on something? Is that always the case? Uh, yes, depending on your mindset at the point in time and also uh, how you embrace the problem. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, so I hope we carry this uh, quote of us every time we encounter a problem instead of uh, having that positive mindset to always think about, okay, this is a problem, but on the other side, it's just a solution that I haven't figured it out yet. Um, so what we're going to talk about on the slides uh, is just the different, we're going to talk about the different frameworks and how to uh, do problem solving. And then we're going to have a case scenario that I would like all of you to participate in, more like a discussion or, yeah, like a discussion between the trainees and just talk about, I'll give you a scenario and then you're going to discuss how, if you are in that situation, how you would handle that uh, problem. Uh, considering that, everyone in different positions uh, can can find a different way of solving that one specific problem. So, yeah. So, yeah, the basic explanation of problem solving is uh, achieving a goal by overcoming the obstacles that we face. I think it's... Um, very self-explanatory uh, and the main things that we should carry or train, train to practice our minds is 
every time we're doing problem solving, uh, we, it always involves critical thinking. And in as much as it involves critical thinking, we need to also find that balance between thinking about it way too much or acting on impulse or finding the right time to act on that problem. And it's, yeah, it's very essential in every, literally every part. I think you all know that. So problem solving is good for um, to enhance decision making and also helps us uh, foster innovation and to, to makes you adaptable to different situations. So I'm guessing currently when you're doing these tasks, uh, especially the technicals, you find a lot of uh, problems that require you to solve. And there are always different ways to come to a solution. But at this moment, what we're doing at Ten Academy and doing all those tasks, solving problems, we're training your you're training how your mind is going to be adaptable to solve more coding problems. And yeah, I think it's also problem solving is always um, good when you do in a when you do it in a team because you get to hear different views from people that you had no idea. Um, you had no idea uh you, you didn't think about that idea before so um getting to solve a problem with a team i think is always more important so there are always um then regular problem solving steps that i think we also covered the same similar on design thinking on the first week week yeah my first week or week zero and it's always involves defining the problem to analyzing the problem and then identify the different solutions and then do an analysis of all the solutions and then choose the one that you think you'll be able to implement um, considering all the factors. And for the, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I think uh, it's it's more like self-explanatory and we'd already like gone through it so when we talk about defining the problem sometimes uh i think this always comes when there's a problem to be solved so that's when you get to have the idea okay so i have this problem or this problem just came up and when so the after finding the problem you always have to like identify what are the causes what caused this issue etc it's part of um going to help you figure out the different ways you're going to solve the problem so it's, it can either be done by doing analysis for example root cause analysis etc they're just different and then after analyzing the problem you come up with potential solutions and i think this is where the group work also helps a lot because you get to hear different views of how people would solve the problem and i think we're going to see that uh when we're when we're doing the the scenario the yeah the challenge today so it's always good to consider different approaches and think creatively and also don't limit yourself at this stage and get different advices from different people as well. Um, so after identifying the solution, you have to implement and evaluate. So there's always that loop of once you found a solution how are you going to like refine it more so after implementing that solution you go back to again evaluating how did this work uh, do we need to change the method that we approached this problem or something different uh, this is the next step and then general tips to improve uh, problem solving 
Um, and we're encouraging you to always think out of the box and explore unconventional solutions. So, yeah, so um, don't limit your mind to the usual thing. Sometimes the solution always lies in the unconventional things. And then seek input and perspectives from different people. We've talked about it. And then um, this point of analyzing problems systematically, that means you need to consider all the factors. So for example, things, issues like price. So you could have something like, okay, we can solve this problem this way, but the price is way too much. Uh, those are the things you should consider. Also, things like ethics. Um, just, um, yeah, after writing all those different solutions, just go through each of them and then analyze and see which one um, has like the minimal uh, implications on either humans or pricing or just the general ethics. And then it's always good to learn from failure and look at them as uh, at least you tried to, at least you tried and always learn from it. So if the first solution didn't work, always go to the next one and try and fix it, ETC. Um, yeah, so um, I think we're going to just, so this is, uh, I'd say a mandatory um, discussion. So everyone needs to participate here. So for this scenario, let's imagine uh, a situation where all the team, you all, all of you are like managers. I know it's not, um, it's not realistic for all of you to be managers for KFC but let's just all imagine that you're all in charge of uh, managing kfc and i i hope everyone's familiar with either kfc or just chicken in just a regular popular um restaurant chain that's known for its fast food dishes and you have to you find out that the entire day's delivery of potato fries that were supplied were bad. So this is a problem with the management. It has affected the customers who bought food from you that day. And there's also, you also need to look at um, your internal team to see who was aware of the problem, ETC, how did this happen? And you also like have to include suppliers and everyone else to see, to just find out where the problem started, how you're going to fix it and how, yeah, going back to that normal state. So, um, I just, this is a very open discussion. We want to see just how, different people think about how they're going to solve this problem. One person's view would be very different from the other. And we just want to see um, that interaction. So I think let's start with who, who do you think um, in this situation was most affected by this, um, by this problem? Just in mute and speak. So we're going to uh, we're going to talk about um, the different people who are going to be affected, and how you're going to finally um, solve the problem. Yes, the clients will be number one. Um, anyone else who you think will be affected by the problem? It's a just yeah yes Hanuk. okay uh i think the, the most affected people first of all are going to be the staff yeah because uh they're gonna have to change their ingredients 
or maybe uh, come up with something else they've never done before in order to uh, you know replace the bad uh, potato fries yeah that's also true um so you have the staff and you have the plans who is there anyone else that you think could be affected by this yeah um suppliers are also a potential um people who could be affected by it uh yes the image of kfc that's true uh because you also have like if a lot of people tweet about it on social media and the management the head management starts to um put a lot of pressure on the team etc yes the people eating the potatoes will also be affected um have we covered every everyone who'll be affected by this problem yeah i think we have so we have the client and we have the staff we have the suppliers and we have the image so that's like the management um yeah it could also come from the farmers as well um yeah the ones who supplied so we could can we classify farmers as suppliers if you if you feel like talking just please unmute and talk this is an open conversation and we encourage you to just think ah uh, yes yeah, the competition will be positively affected yes so people like chicken in or yeah the ceo yeah that's great um so uh, so we can now we can now like go into the specific people so we have the clients so the people who are eating the potatoes um so there's a problem with them they're not satisfied with the product they spent their money and they didn't get value from uh what they ordered so how are you going to so the problem with the customers is uh we have customer dissatisfaction so how do you think or in what ways are you going to help um the clients feel um more satisfied okay not satisfied but just um like how are you going to compensate them in a way what are some of the ideas that you would do if you were in that situation as a manager what would you do yes Anna. you can speak up hello hello can you hear me yes we can uh, I, I think you can give them discount for the day, uh, you know, to compensate them for not having some of the products. Yeah. Um, will there be any implications on the profits that you'll make throughout the day? And is it going to affect, um, yeah, is it going to yeah. affect the budget of the team? I, I think it is going to affect it a little bit, but it's only one day, and uh, I think it's better than like uh, giving people bad uh, food and you know making them sick or you know ruining your reputation. I think it's worth to lose you know maybe ten percent discount, twenty percent discount for one day. I think it's much better. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of gets into the ethics bit of it. So you have um yeah i think that's that's one way to go about it how else would you someone let's hear from someone else ahmed what would you do in this situation to compensate your customers okay I was saying the same was mm -hmm. said, but I will offer free a few meals for those who affected. Uh, as I said, it will uh, affect on the budget or 
but uh, we need to to sell these customers so they will buy more Sorry, in the I future. Can't hear you well. so is this it, is, uh, is it a good strategy, I think. Or is this? I didn't hear you well. Is it just me oh. or it's from every person? Okay, am I am I breaking? Yes. Hello. Hello. Right. Can you maybe type it in chat? Or type. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, while we wait for you to type, Sheila, how would you compensate? your clients. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Um, I think what I will do is I will give my clients, any client, because, okay, the only thing we know right now is that the delivery of potatoes, like for today has gone bad, yeah? So like yeah. we still don't know the clients who have ordered, who have wanted to have potato fries or anything potato related, or it's mm -hmm. only potato fries, right? Yeah. So Just like what like so what i will do is any customer who comes and um wants like would have wanted potato fries since i can't deliver like or first of all i would put in another order for potato fries like another order for potatoes to make fresh potato fries sorry fresh potato fries then like um after that any customer who comes before the delivery is made i will give them a coupon for um like a coupon for a fixed price for any like for any time they would come back for any mm -hmm. potato potato related um dish like yeah they would want so this means that i will still keep my customers and because they'll be happy they won't just leave even if they wanted let's say they wanted potato fries and uh, chicken the mm -hmm. the chances of them still ordering something different instead of just leaving disappointed will be higher because now they'll be like yeah i got a coupon i'm happy so i can come next time and like just get free fries or free potato related dishes so basically for me i'd give a coupon for a fixed price that yeah would also mean that next time they'd still come and they'll still spend so i'll lose probably i'll lose a, a little few a few dollars here and there some money here and there but i will still not lose my customers so that's what i will do yeah that's i think that's great um making sure that your customer returns to ensure your business runs and they don't you don't lose your customers i think that's a good that's a great way to look at it hillary let's hear uh, how you're going to help us okay uh how I can offer compensation is uh, first of all by offer, offering apologies uh, and then offering substitutions, giving like maybe they maybe you can you can you can you can tell them that there's there's something else on the menu and uh, and also I think Sheila mentioned about this can offer them substitution with uh, so that they can have something. If if the others who don't want substitution, maybe you can uh maybe refund their money. So that's some so. Yeah, that's also great. Um I think uh what you guys have thought about is putting yourself in the shoes of the customer. And yeah, I think those ideas are great. So have we satisfied our clients so we apologize to them we offer them compensation we give them coupons etc um is my do you think the customer is satisfied and would come back again next time yes wonder uh, can you hear me if you, oh yeah yes you hear me yes we can 
Um, the best, yeah, the best way out, uh, if it wasn't that, I would uh, apologize to the customers, but KFC's, KFC doesn't, they don't run on fries, it's mainly chicken, so I think we just tell, yeah. we would uh, come up with a way of uh, eliminating fries off the menu for the day, no, like for probably like for the entire week, so that the customers feel like it's uh, it's like something new, then we sort mm -hmm. it out the other week. So that's what, that's what I think we'll do. We like to rise up entirely for the whole week and then uh, introduce some, some, some easier, some other menu, something else on the menu. So it's like a weekly special. And then mm -hmm. figure out a way of getting a better supplier of price so that this situation doesn't happen again. Okay. I think that's a, that's also a great way to look at it. And I hope we've all learned that whenever there's a problem, you can have different people having different views. For example, uh, when Dara would change the menu for that week to just let the customers know, we're working on it and we'll bring you good fries next week, etc. Um, yeah, so, um, Ahmed says, I, I was saying offering free meal for this affected will be good. Okay. Free meals. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess you would also have to think about the budgeting as well and profits and yeah, all those account things, but, um, Compensate any directly affected customer. Yeah. How would you compensate them, Joseph? Uh, for those who had already bought a meal and those who had already bought bad fries, I'd return them the money. Okay. Yeah, as well as an apology. Have you ever been, uh, have you ever received money back from eating bad KFC fries? from eating bad or bad kfc fries i've never received any money uh, what has happened is i've been uh compensated with a free meal uh -huh. or uh something additional on top yeah maybe like if uh an extra plate of fries or an extra plate of ribs yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense Okay, so I think we've all brainstormed ways that we think uh, we could offer a solution to our very angry clients and how we're going to compensate them. So we've we've tackled our clients. Uh, now we have the staff. So you've been working in the kitchen from 6 a.m. in the morning. You've delivered fries. How come that you didn't check whether the fries were good before actually delivering them. Um, how would you guys handle your staff? Um, yeah, I'd like to hear your views. Um, uh, could you read? Uh, so I was saying, so we've handled, we had initially listed everyone who got affected with the, um, with the issue. So we had the clients, we had the staff, the suppliers, the image of KFC, the farmers, and yeah, competitors, ETC. So we've tackled how we're going to offer compensation to the clients. Now we're going to the next, uh, affected group that is the staff so the staff are also like in some kind of trouble let me say because they have they were in the kitchen they maybe tasted the fries or i don't know if they did but the point is uh so as a manager i don't think you'd know if they tasted or if they didn't but maybe they're supposed to taste it before but the point is you as a staff or you're making the fries 
uh, why did you let the situation happen? As a manager, what would you do to your staff? Or, yeah. I think Shamil had raised his hand. Yes, Jabez. I think maybe the first thing is to understand the root cause for the for the problem, where it's uh, initiated. Is it the problem from the supplier side or is it a particular stuff? Uh, so we have to be able to identify where the problem is. Then the first thing uh, after that, figuring out is that how can uh, uh, we manage this problem so that it will never happen again. Uh, if it's maybe repeated a staff problem uh, or some particular staff is doing this, uh, it may be serious uh, on that stuff, but uh, it may be a different problem. So figuring out the root problem is the first thing. Um, how would you do this? Do you like call for a staff meeting or? How are you going to approach the finding of the root cause? So maybe uh, see the chain. For example, if the fried uh, uh, potatoes, first is the potatoes was okay be, uh, when the suppliers uh, uh, was supplying the potatoes or checking that, uh, maybe I have to talk to the, uh, the staff who gets the potato and also talk to the chef about uh, how uh, they uh, uh, fried the potato and checking that also. And also checking the delivery system. Maybe it's uh, a, de a delivery problem or uh, they uh, delivered uh, expired or uh, uh, potato fried that's, uh, has, that, has, that has to be thrown away. So I have to check all the chain uh, then uh, identify the exact uh, cause of the problem. Okay, um, that's I think that's a good way to go about it. And remember, there's no like right or wrong way to go about it. If you are all managers there, you would handle the situation in your own way. So, yeah, that's a good idea. So Daisy asks, does the team have a quality checks? If so, I'd ask why the manager did not follow them. That's a great question because, yes, they're supposed to have quality checks. I'm, I'm thinking they're supposed to have quality checks. Um, but what happens when you have like 300 orders already and yeah, you have already bought all these fries and you have three orders, you have the pressure and you don't have any other fries. Um, what would you do as a staff, Daisy? Um, hi. Hi, we can't hear you well. Hello. Okay, um, Daisy, maybe you can just type yes. Uh, in the meantime, we can listen to Bethlehem's, Bethlehem, sorry. Bethlehem's um, idea. Okay. I think the first thing I would be doing is uh, holding an emergency staff meeting mm -hmm. and gathering the staff. And uh, as Javi said, try to figure out uh, how did this happen. Mm -hmm. It might uh, happen to one person, but it happened to the delivery throughout the whole day. And mm -hmm. uh, even if uh, the problem was from the suppliers or the farmers mm -hmm. how come the problem proceeded and happened to all the customers and how come no one checked that there was a problem with the fries and mm -hmm. after finding out the root cause of the problem uh we'll try to provide a solution it could be giving free services as uh, the teammates say or mm -hmm. other solutions 
and uh, make sure that this doesn't happen again and if it if the problem is with, with one person or with a uh, particular self they might get uh, some repercussions it okay. could be their paycheck uh, being cut or something other services but yeah something like that yeah that's also a great idea and what it, what that has made me think or realize is do you think the staff um do you think the um hmm, do you think the staff is the problem in this situation because as a staff i just come to work i use the product you bought i just follow the processes and then i deliver or I give the clients food. Is the staff um, is the staff the problem in this situation? I'm not saying it's completely the staff's problem. What oh, I'm trying to say I, is I understand I understood what you said. I'm just um uh, just this is an extra question. Do you think the staff is at fault in this situation? Um, there might be partially some hard fault. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, when Dara says the staff is, is at fault, why? Yes, they definitely had a part to play. Uh huh. But what happens when there's this like there's demand for food? And you also have this uh, a lot of fries in the store that needs um, that needs to be to be sold. There's also the business perspective. How is the staff at fault, Martin? Yes. Um, uh, based on okay, based on the entire question, if we were to look at it like from a business standpoint, you can't give out free. I don't know. You can't give out freebies. So the staff are at fault because. plant if you look at your inventory whoever looks at it the person in charge would have to look and find out if the potatoes are good or not good that's probably like the night before so that's that you guys plan for how you're going to work throughout the next day so whoever looks at that content the inventory whoever is in charge of that if they didn't check or confirm that let me say these potatoes would take us this long and if they check if they go beyond this time time frame they will they'll have gone bad that means the whole the whole the whole scenario is, is on them so that person okay they don't have to fire them but that person there is is should be held responsible for what just happened it, i don't think the manager could can do anything more than that so it's it's on them the people who are in charge of inventory and knowing what is required to so that's what i think I think that's also a great point. Um, they need to be accountable for their work. Um, but yeah, that's I think that's good brainstorming on the staff. So because of time, we can maybe go to like the suppliers just briefly. So we probably find out that the suppliers gave you bad potatoes how would you handle the suppliers in your thoughts in your way any idea yes wonder i don't think uh, i don't think i don't think you can i think it, the best thing to do is to move on to another supplier because I think um, it's up to you to look at the produce before before you take it, before you actually take it, and you know that oh, we actually got good potatoes. So it's I, I think it's up to whoever buys, not the not the not the supplier, because I don't know the supplier could the supplier could say they got them when they were fine, and then like there's no proof that they gave them to you when they were bad or they got spoiled when you kept them. So what I think is that if you realize that what you bought from the supplier wasn't good, just 
look for another supplier at a, at a better price and then you move on okay but what if this supplier has been your go-to supplier for like more than 10 years and they never missed a single supply are you going to ensure that your next supplier would be able to like um supply consistently like the others and how long would that take you just random questions and brainstorming Okay, uh, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, sorry. Bethlehem, we can't hear you. Sorry about that, my mic was off. Yeah. I think we will have a, a good talk about how this happened. If we have a good uh, supply history and if they have been supplying us, this uh, good uh, potatoes for for a long time and this mm -hmm. happened uh, for this time mm -hmm. we need to talk and uh, we need to come up with a solution about our losses and yeah. how they will compensate us and move on yeah but if uh, this problem is going to continue we might uh, change our suppliers but for the moment we're going to talk and look for a solution okay that's a good idea. Um, Hanok, what would you uh, do? Yeah, I agree with Betty. Uh, yeah, it just it depends on the record. Like if they've been a good supplier for a long time, I think uh, everyone makes mistakes. Like even organizations can make a mistake. And if they've had a good record, I think, you know, we try to make sure that never happens again and we move on. That's great. Uh, you're being human. Um, so in the interest of time, let's just move to um, as a manager, how are you going to um, keep your image brand uh, in the same high standards as it was before? What are you going to do to maintain that image after the situation has happened? Any ideas? Or what would you do in, if this were you? We've seen so many times how on social media, when there's a problem with a certain brand, they write um, some apology to the public, etc. Um, yes, Hanok. Okay, so uh, I think the most important thing is to be honest, like uh, to to tell uh, the, your customers what happened. You know, first of all, you should not give your customers like bad food. So you should take uh, the uh, bad potatoes off the shelf and just be honest with them and say, you know, we had a problem and we couldn't uh, give you, uh, you know, potatoes and I think I would uh, follow my previous plan to just give the people a discount and apologize. I think, like I think somebody suggested, like uh, maybe saying uh, we're experimenting with different ingredients, stuff like that. I think that's a bad idea. I think if you lie and somebody found out, uh, I think that would be worse. I would I would just be honest with customers. Okay, that's that's great. I like how you're approaching the problem from a very human perspective of your customers first and positive values that's good anyone else with a different idea before we get into the challenge for this week okay so i hope we've all noticed or learned that um, there could be many different ways to solve one particular problem and like no there's no right or wrong question um so let's get into the 
challenge that you're supposed to do this week. Um, it's due on Saturday, so tomorrow by 8 p.m. midnight. And you're just given like a different scenario, uh, just like the one we talked about today. But now this is uh, a different scenario. So imagine you're a product manager at a, a gaming startup and you've noticed, so you rolled out your first, uh, first, uh, first game draft, let me call it draft. Uh, you rolled it out, you ran some ads on it and then people downloaded, so many people downloaded your app and then after a while you noticed uh, that in as much as there were so many downloads the number of current active users and the retention of the customers is not as big as the ones who downloaded so um yeah so i i don't think if you guys have had an experience of downloading a gaming app on your phone from the very nice uh, visuals or the advertisement was so like thrilling and then once you downloaded it the experience was like way lower than what you had already uh, envisioned for the app so this week's challenge um you're just going to imagine yourself as a product manager for that specific company and so here we've given you uh, some of the following, uh, some of the reasons that that um, could have caused uh, the could have caused the problem in the first place. And so we there's like five problems. So the first one is the misleading advertising. So the ad ad um, was very appealing, and then the app itself is not as appealing as the ad so this can always result in like user disappointment and eventually disengagement or deleting the app so the first task is as a product manager um how are you going to solve this issue there's definitely uh problems with maybe inside your team that the marketing team do not talk well with the developer sites, ETC, but you as a product manager, how are you going to solve this problem? The second uh, problem could be the marketing flow. So why is it that you're spending so much money on advertising way too soon? So that's like mindless advertising. How are you going to fix or like brainstorm ways to tell your marketing team um, what to do. It could be like uh, target marketing. Uh, it could be describing who your persona is, knowing exactly uh, where, which social media platforms to run your ads on or which websites to run on or just generally where to do your uh, marketing ads. So we're hoping that uh, the first two tasks would be you you'd just be able to go and do a little bit of research and see uh, something about just marketing in general and also advertising and how to like package your product well to properly advertise to your end, end user uh, client so the th the second for the second um, for the second problem, the task is for you to just give steps or guidance to the marketing team to ensure that they improve on their marketing uh, works. And the third one would be uh, poor employee collaboration. So it's clear that within your team, they're not collaborating well. Otherwise, what would have been advertised what was advertised would have been the same, would have been the same as the app itself. So what are, as the product manager, what steps are you going to take to ensure that your team collaborates and improves better? And there's also customer dissatisfaction from the rates of which the users are like, um, 
deactivating your app, um, how are you going to make sure that you retain your customers on the app? Just brainstorm uh, different ideas. And also the last problem is communication within your team. Uh, just make sure how are you going to ensure that there's good communication between the developer, management, um, marketing, how are you going to ensure that you've set up a good framework for there to be like proper communication. And for communication, we divided it into like two. So the first one is within your whole team. So how are you going to ensure there's effective communication within the whole team? And for the second one is for you to think about how the gaming industry is. So imagine someone who has this idea in the mind, I want a game like this. So this player should kick his leg like this, you know how? So think about how you're going to properly communicate the vision, the idea, and also the feel of the game. How are you going to make sure that everyone who listens to your idea implements it like very well? Uh, so from the illustrators to the uh developers everyone so yeah just think about remember again this is problem solving everyone would have a different view of how they approach a problem so there's no right or wrong um idea but we just encourage you to train that muscle to handle different ambiguities in life um so yeah, the submission will just be a report answering all these uh, five questions. Um, yeah, any question, anything that's not, uh, anything that's not clear? We're going to, uh, we're going to copy these challenges on the drive, um, otherwise, uh, any question, any concern, anything, anything unclear? Okay, so I, okay, Hilary. Uh, when is the deadline for the submission? Saturday, uh, 8 p.m. UTC, okay. East African time, around 11 p.m. Okay, so I wish you guys all a very happy weekend. Good luck with the coding. Good luck with all these challenges. All the best and drink a lot of water. Bye.